What's up, Reds? Welcome to the Sunday Summary. I'm your host, Kyle. With me, as always, is Steve. We're running a little bit late today, but I appreciate your patience. Steve, how are you feeling after that um, performance yesterday? We are not running a little bit late. Kyle is running a lot a bit late, just to clarify for everyone. How am I feeling about the performance? I'm sad, man. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed, but just like extremely, extremely disappointed. So you're not mad, you're disappointed. I mean, yeah, I don't even know if I can be mad because we put the ball in the back of the net four times, like two of them disallowed. I get that, but that's just a matter of inches at that point. Yeah. Like I feel like four against Brighton is something that's extremely realistic. But they did the same thing to us. I mean, they had two offsides. You know, ruled back. Yeah, well, that's what I'm getting to next is like, I feel like four goals is is extremely realistic for Liverpool to score against. Right, and you end up with two, but you have a two-goal lead and you're at home. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think I'd say this, but like, our problem is our defense. Like, that's where we look weak in like the midfield too, but we can't say really like, The problem is like the quality in the midfield because we have injuries there. Right, right. Uh, But I think yesterday the problem was the quality in the midfield with Kata going off. Ox, Jones wasn't at his best. I wasn't going to say Jones was bad, but he wasn't the best. And Ox came on, made an instant impact with the assist. Beautiful assist, by the way. But then he did absolutely nothing the rest of the game. And Hendo, aside from his goal... He didn't do anything either. And Hendo's usually really good. Mm -hmm. And what worries me is that going into the Athletic match and then the West Ham match, which are both very important games, West Ham probably more important at this point, given our, you know, we're top of the top of the table in the um, Champions League. What are we going to do in the midfield? Because. I was uh, I was on the Liverpool website this morning, and guys, in case you didn't know, Kata is most likely going to miss the Athletic match. He hasn't had his scans yet. He's going to have his scans most likely tomorrow to uh, determine the extent of the injury. But Kata, let's assume he's out for both matches, Steve. What are we going to do? Well, Thiago will be back. Is he? He's going to be back? Yeah, he's back in team training. I would imagine it's he's ready to go now. Next match, he's got to play. <clears throat> So that's a that's a win, okay. Mm-hmm. But Fabinho, when's Fabinho coming back? Because I think we miss Fabinho more than anybody. Well, yeah, I mean that goes without saying. I think Curtis just had an off game. Curtis yeah. never plays poorly. I think he's tired, or maybe he's still like in some pain. I don't know. Um, but I would feel good with Hendo, Curtis, Tiago. Well, Hendo, Curtis. I think Thiago. it's just like one game. I, I don't think well, we need yeah. to panic over one game. But I guess my question. Let me put it this way. I would field our strongest midfield against West Ham as opposed to Atleti. So, is Milner fit? So, no. Milner's out. (sighs) My thinking is that Klopp will go with... Dude, hell, don't be surprised if you see, like, Tyler Morton or something on Wednesday. I'm I'm serious, dude. Well, like... You know what I mean? Like, I don't think we need to panic or, like... Say we need more quality in midfield. That's just like my thought process. Harvey Elliott's out. Fabinho's right. hurt. Milner's hurt. Tiago's hurt. Cato went off. That's five. What are we? And we had eight. We had eight. That's five people out. Yeah. What are we supposed to do? That's all right. Like we don't no. need to go buy. I see people in here saying we need to go buy midfielders. Yeah. Backup DM Joshua Mundy has to be a priority in the next two windows. Like, maybe. Maybe. So, all right, here's my thinking, okay? You can't plan <clears throat> eight midfielders at the start of the season, guys. You guys let us know what you think in the chat. By the way, good morning to Josh, Dustin, John, Liz, Georgie, Tony. What's good? Adelia, Jeevan as well. Love all you guys. Good morning. Here's the thing. With eight midfielders, you would think we'd have cover for every situation. You have a starting three, you have a backup three, and then you have two additional ones, right? And we were talking about this last week or the week before. You're happy with Kata and Ox being the five and six guy, you know what I mean? Like, everyone is happy with that. But when 
you can't plan for five injuries. So when you have five injuries, one of them is a long term. You might have to get someone in January. Maybe. You might have to. Yeah, I don't know. Like, do you see that happening? <clears throat> the only way I see it's happening if it's uh, someone on a free or a very, very low fee, right? Because you look at the signings we made in January. Minamino is one of them. And then we've basically just done loans for everyone else. It's like. Virgil. It's like, Oh yeah, Virgil. But yeah, yeah well, that doesn't count. Doesn't really count. We're not yeah. buying some like star-studded midfielder in January. Yeah. We haven't lost in twenty-five games. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna go splash a hundred mil somewhere. So, ideally, says Ox isn't good enough. And Steve, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. Aside from the beautiful assist yesterday, for that was quality. That assist, Ox was not with it bro he got 80 minutes of playing time not 80 70 whatever 70 minutes of playing time he didn't do much and he made the assist as soon as he came on the field Shayna, what's going on so i'm th i just really want to know what everyone's thinking right and steve give me your thoughts on ox yesterday ox's performance and then we'll take a short uh short break uh talk about our sponsors no i don't i don't really I have much to report. I think you hit it all with Ox. It's we know what he's got. It's just like, dude, when can you actually show it? Yeah, what and we, that's, what are we doing here? That's what bothers me because yesterday he showed that. I mean, not anyone can just make that cross. That's that's a Trent level cross, okay? <clears throat> and we've seen Ox be able to pass the ball like that. We've seen Ox be able to finish. And even Ox yesterday they were at points where he was taking shots. I think he took two shots and they were blocked, right? Because Brighton, they were very compact defensively. Is Ox good enough? Is this a situation, it's kind of like Lalana, where Klopp's just going to let his contract run down and then he's going to let him leave? Or do we, try to sell, uh, do we try to sell Ox this summer and bring in a more, dare I say, veteran, professional midfielder? That could work. I think you got to do the same thing with Kata if that's the case. I but the that's that's again what we'll get into here in a minute talking about Kata because that's what everyone wants to talk about. He's been hurt um, three games in a row. What's that? He's been hurt three games in a row. How yeah. funny is it, bro, that he was carried off of the field in a stretcher? Yeah. And he came back for the next game. Oh, and then the yesterday, was a little over exaggeration. I think that was like way too cautious. They were like. Kata, you got it. There was a hard tackle there. You probably broke every bone in your body. Let's carry you off in a stretcher. But no, he's fine. Yesterday, I didn't even see anything that happened to him. And he's grabbing his hamstring. As soon as they grab the hamstring, you immediately know something's going on. Like, pulling a hamstring, you know it. I think he was touching his leg, his ankle. He, so, no, he was touch, He was grabbing his hamstring. Hmm. Yeah, and then Klopp confirmed it today that he's going to have a scan on the hamstring. So... He's most likely going to be out, but yeah, everyone. I mean, if Ox is going, Kate has got to go. I I just don't I don't agree with that. I just don't. Why? Because Ox and Kata are different quality. It doesn't and take you think injuries. Kata is a much higher quality than Ox. Hundred percent. Why? Because he scored a couple goals recently. He also Look got taken off at halftime of one of those games where he scored a goal. That's fair, but Ox hasn't even started. <clears throat> well, clearly, Klopp Ox is doesn't playing like him against as much. Norwich in the first round of the EFL Cup. That's where Klopp trusts Ox to start, Steve. Yeah, I think that's where Kata should be starting. We know Klopp loves Kata, but Steve, did you see the statistic? Navi Kata on the field. We've scored twenty three and conceded zero. Zero. Oh, he's oh, okay. I didn't see that. Okay, okay. I'm just dropping this year. Stats. This is this season. Yes. Wow, he is a one heck of a defender. That's for sure. And that's where my criticism comes because Ox, instinctually, he's an attacker. I mean, you see it. You know, I don't know why the hell he was playing right wing back with Arsenal. I mean, whatever. He's instinctually an attacker. He might try to. Sorry, my screen's going off. Um. 
he might try to do some defensive work, but I honestly just think he's he's attack minded, and maybe that's why Klopp wanted to try him out as like a one of those front three guys. But look, just to sum up this point before we you know jump into everything else. Oh, I just hit my light. I love Ox. We've seen spurts of Ox being world class. Even yesterday, that assist was world class. I don't care who you ask. Pinpoint accuracy. Mane still had to finish it, but still. He put it on a golden platter for him, and he finished. Okay, The rest of the game, he did absolutely nothing. He was off. His timing was off. He There was one point in the game where it kind of just set it for me. They had a breakaway in the second half going towards Anfield Road End. Robertson was on the overlapping run. Ox was dribbling, and he went to give the through ball, and he just passed it right to the Brighton defender, and Brighton had a breakaway. And it's little things like that. It's like, all you need to do, Ox, is get it around the defender and let Robertson run onto it. And he doesn't. He passes it within reach of the defender. It's little things like that that I that I'm like, that's basic, man. Like it doesn't it doesn't sloppy. have to be an yeah, it's sloppy. It doesn't have to be an accurate pass. You just have to get it into space so Robertson can run onto it. Yeah. So that that's that's kind of where my head's at. But guys, let us know what you think in the chat. And real quick, I just want to so uh, what are we going to do with Cato then? Well, well, we'll get to that in a minute. I want to take a brief break here and talk about our support for the show is brought to you guys by Manscaped. Okay. Manscaped is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Okay. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels, guys. Okay. And again, we talked about this last week. Steve, they sent us great products. Okay. We got to try them out. And honestly, man, it <laughs> so I told you before, it took me like two minutes to get everything done. And it's just quality. I didn't have to go over anything twice. I didn't have to go over anything twice, man. And they gave us a promo code, guys. If you want to go over and check out their products, use the promo code capital N, capital B, capital R at checkout. You'll get 20% off plus free shipping, guys. It's really, it's, and we were talking about this last week, Steve, wireless charging. Okay, I don't need would you electromagnetic conduction. It's amazing. They got an LED light or LED light. So when you're tripping those dark crevices, right, you can get that done, guys. 20% off free shipping with the code capital N, capital B, capital R. Okay. You got the fourth generation trimmer, the lawnmower 4.0. And I don't have it in front of me. I was gonna grab it, but I completely forgot to grab it. Okay. You heard that right, the 4.0. Okay. Over 4 million men worldwide have trusted Manscaped, including Stephen and myself. And this isn't just for men to buy. Women, you can get it for your husbands, your boyfriends, your brothers, your dads, whatever you want for a Christmas gift. Guys, with this exclusive offer for you, 20% off free worldwide shipping with the code capital N, capital B, capital R at checkout. All right, Steve. Let's get back into this, okay? So, Kata, you were saying we gotta sell Kata <clears throat> if we sell Ox. Well, I think if we if we if we're thinking about like shipping Ox out of town, like Kata has to be on that list too. He has to be. <laughs> now hold on. I just want to, uh, Liz, Liz, we're pushing that line. But look, the ball deodorant, okay? She says, "Is it flavored?" Inquiring minds want to know. Well, there's a different uh, flavored or scented. Like, <laughs> I don't, I think Liz legitimately wants to know if it's flavored, and you know, there's children watching this show, so you know we got to be careful. But this stuff smells great. I don't think it's scented though, or flavored. I haven't drinking it or tasted it, so I don't know. But the crop preserver definitely smells good. I'll tell you that, and uh, it's vegan. So that if that answers your question, Liz, if you wanted to eat it, it's vegan. Okay. Paraben free, dye free, and cruelty free, a aka it's not tested on animals. Everyone, okay, made in the USA, ingredients sourced worldwide. To answer your question, and I believe Manscaped partners with the uh, Testicular Cancer Foundation. I'm not sure if that's the official uh, name of it, but that's really good to know. Okay, guys, so they're they're doing all this for a cause as well. So go ahead and check that out. Um, but sorry, Steve, go ahead. Um, you were talking about Kata. If if Ox has to go, if you think Ox has to go, then I think you should be okay with Kata going. Because, uh, like, 
Has Kata ever made an assist like Ox had yesterday? Like, does he even have that in his arsenal, that first-time curling Hendo-type cross? Like, no, he doesn't. Maybe not. Maybe not the cross, but let's look at his... Let's look mm, at the... Oh, I'm no, just no, no, asking no. a question. Okay, okay, fair enough. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Now, he scored a couple of goals, mm -hmm. but he's a liability defensively. It's a fact. Ox, right? No, no. Kata. He is a liability defensively. Yes, a liability. All right, he, all right. He, he, the, just what real comes quick, to just mind real quick, recently real quick. is the Real Those Madrid two. Champions League game from last year and then the game a couple weeks ago where he scored in the first half and they had to yank him off at half. I was going to say, if you take out that performance where he, he got just burned twice, okay? If you take out that, where has he been bad defensively? Because everyone in the world, I don't care what player you are, has a bad game a bad performance every single player dude we've I'm seen it from thinking about like didn't he get subbed off against real as well real madrid he, champions league he may have because james milner was just dominating that game but like oh. players don't get subbed off at halftime unless they're a liability or they're injured kate is the only one that i've seen get subbed off at halftime curtis Recently. jones Okay, well, Curtis Jones, Kyle, isn't a $50 million signing that's Fair never healthy. Fair enough. Fair enough. Curtis Jones is a child. Yep. And he's only Curtis, missed I'm old five games. Curtis Jones a father. <laughs> he's only missed oh, five God. games through injury since the start of the 20, 2020, 2021 season. Oh. And that's something that I wanted to pull up, guys. So if we're looking at the oh. numbers. Huh? Who has only missed five games? Jones. Jones. I and this is. Kata. No, <laughs> I was so, like, where was I? So Kata has missed 24 games in the, over the last two seasons through injury. James Milner has missed 16. Tiago's missed like 21. Um, Henderson's missed 14. And the lowest two have been Jones and Elliot. But Elliot has, it's all, it doesn't, count. It doesn't really count. Yeah. So, um, Oh, no, no, no. Ox, excuse me. Ox was like up there with the highest because, you know, Ox was out for like two straight seasons, basically. Um, but yeah, that's what I wanted to bring up. So injury prone wise, our midfield is just flat up injury prone. But I, mm -hmm. part of me thinks that it's not the players being injury prone. It's the demand that the system places on these midfielders, dude. I'm mm. telling you, because I'm just I'm just thinking, because if you look at other midfields, other midfields, OK? Take Chelsea, okay? No midfielders are are injured for them right now that I know of. Okay. West Ham have had Declan Rice and Suchek healthy the entire season. And I feel like it's the system. I feel like it's too demanding for Nobby right now. And he's slowly grown into it over the past three or four seasons, right? The first two seasons he was with us, it was absolutely brutal. Man couldn't string together two or three games without it getting injured. This season, unfortunately, has been his best run of games in what it's been, eight games, seven games? And now he's starting to pick up these knocks. I really think we need to start going after players who are just, their injury record is flawless. Like bulletproof players. Literally bulletproof players, yes. Well, I can explain this. So I think for Fabinho, like he plays that CDM role. He's a bruiser. He's like getting in tackles. He's also tall and long, and like his body type, I feel like isn't necessarily built for this. Not athletic sort of system. He's he's not sure. Yeah. So like I can see that it takes a toll on him. That and he plays very very physical. Hendo, he's not young. Hendo's not young, and he plays as hard as he possibly can. In the system, I think can be attributed to Hendo as well. But Milner's just old. Yeah. I love Milner. I don't want him to go anywhere, but he's old. He's going to pull his hamstring once a month. It's just the way it goes. <laughs> Seriously. No, really. It really once is. Once a month. Tiago has God. been hurt his whole career. Yeah. So that makes sense. Kata had a crazy injury record before we even got him. And Oxes are just like one-off acute major injuries. Like, um, like, one-off instances for there's, like there's structural injuries yeah he like yeah. he'll he'll tear something or he'll break something like 
those are the injuries that don't make a player injury prone, guys. Just just to clarify. So if you get a structural injury, you break a bone, you tear a ligament or something, that's not an injury prone thing. That's usually high impact or, you know, traumatic injury, Unlucky, right? Yeah. Exactly. But then when you have constant hamstring injuries like Kata or constant calf plantar fasciitis stuff like Hendo or Tiago just always getting nicks and knacks and stuff like that, that's injury prone. So I just wanted to clarify. I think the system takes a toll on Fabinho and Kata and maybe a little bit Hendo. But I think everyone else is just – it's not because of the system. Yeah. Um one thing I will say, though, I mean, six, since Ox has come back uh, at the end of last season from his like long stint being injured, he's been he's been available. So that's one positive I'll say about Ox. Okay, but Liz was asking about it earlier. Uh, what's the best available? Or what's the, God? I always mess it up. What's the best ability? And the answer is availability. Ox has been available. Um, the only downside to that is is now that he's available, people are finding something else to criticize him about and. It's basically, is he good enough? Is he good enough to to be a midfielder in this system and consistently carry out Klopp's game plan and not concede like we did yesterday? I mean, as soon as as soon as Ox was on, he made the assist, but after that, it was all Brighton. The rest of the game, it was it was all Brighton. I also hate the fact that we talk about this one assist. I'm guilty of it too. But one we have pass. to. We have Why? to because Why? because you I can't say Ox did nothing yesterday and then people are going to be like, but what about that world class assist? And I'm like, you're absolutely right. It was a world class assist. But how it was a world class assist. Got, but how many crosses went in yesterday? I feel like we didn't actually have that many crosses. Right, well, in a given game, like there's a million crosses that go in. That's true. That's true. Like I don't, I don't let's, think he deserves credit for like. Let's go to Tony. Let's go to some of the fans lucky here. Cross. I've always been a fan of Ox, but it's time for him to go. Kata's too injury prone to be starting midfielder. One thing is obvious how much we miss Fabinho. So I 100% agree with the last part. We clearly miss Fabinho. We've always missed Fabinho when Fabinho's out. Hendo is is decent in that holding midfield spot. But Hendo has usually never played in that pivot spot, Steve. It's always been Wijnaldum. And that's mm-hmm. kind of what goes back to people are saying we didn't replace Wijnaldum. Well, we, we did, in my opinion, with Thiago. It was just preemptive. We got Tiago before when Alden left. But the thing about Tiago is, is he's not healthy. So it seems like we haven't replaced him. Um, mm. Elliot. Elliot's lots into the midfield. Well, right, right, right. And then um, players can move around. Like, yeah. What do you want? You want to clone Genie Wijnaldum and bring him in? I would love that. That would be cool, I guess. I'll tell you what. <laughs> You can't deny he's it having, wouldn't be cool. He's not having fun over there. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's getting a fat paycheck, though, and he's getting a lot of family time. If you follow him on social media, he's he's spending a lot more time with his family. Well, yeah. What's he going to do? Sit on the bench? Yeah. I mean, first of all, what was I going to say? I don't know. We're cloning Wijnaldum. Oh, f- Clone and Wijnaldum, dude. I can't. I can't with the Wijnaldum replace with the Genie stuff. We we haven't lost a game. Yeah. We haven't lost. No, you're not. You're not wrong. And we we're can pinpoint wrong. those draws like what the problem was. Yeah. It's, it's the defense. Now, this is an – oh, wait, wrong one. This is an excellent question from Dustin. How are we without Fabinho against United then? So – Valid point, right? I mean, we played exceptional against United. Who started against United, though? It was Keita, it was Hendo, and it was Jones, wasn't it? It was Keita, Hendo, and Jones. And then Keita went off at the end of the game because Paul Pogba's tackle. And then we brought on Ox. Keita was the big factor in that game, guys. If you remember, Keita was pressing nonstop. He got so many chances. He had the goal. I'm pretty sure he had an assist, too. I could be wrong about the assist, but I know he had the goal. Cato has been unstoppable this season, and I don't care what anyone says. When Cato plays, he's phenomenal, and that was the difference maker. The reason yesterday went the way it did, yes, that's my opinion, Stephen. I'm sticking with it. The reason 
Brighton came back and drew that game yesterday is because Kata was subbed off and our midfield was running around like a chicken with their head cut off. Our midfield had no idea what to do yesterday without Kata in it. What am I missing? Am I missing something with Navi Kata? I, I feel like you are. I like at least I, he's producing. At least there's like a, a couple stats behind his play. A couple goals, decent, pretty good goals. But I'm not – am I missing something? Like, has he even had a man-of-the-match performance yet? Like, Well, that's the thing. It's like when he plays well, everyone else plays well too. So, like, for example, the United game, he played phenomenal. He got subbed off, though, because of the – or not subbed off, but came off with the injury. But you look at that game, Sala played phenomenal. You know what I mean? Bobby was excellent. Oh, wait, was it Bobby? Some A lot of people were excellent that game. It's fine. So you're saying Kate is the reason we're playing I, well this year. I, oh, that's I didn't say that. I said when we were looking at the United game, the reason we played well against United, I think, in the midfield was because Cato was there. United can't handle our press, first off. United can't handle any press, whereas Brighton handled the press beautifully, and they broke it down no problem. And that's another thing. When you have Ox, Jones, and Hendo in the midfield, Ox is not good at pressing. So you really only have two people pressing. And you can't have them doing all the legwork because then you're open at the back. And that's exactly what happened yesterday. Brighton just exposed the channels. And, oh, dude, there's so many different variables, though, that you can look at. Yeah, the, I think I've had enough of the Cata stuff. I think we all have. And the Ox and whatever. Midfield. But what's the scenario with the def with the defense? Because... I'm a little, I'm getting a little frustrated that um, Joel Matip hasn't been put back in the lineup yet. Very good point. What do you guys think in the chat about why Joel Matip has been um, rotated out the last two games? Steve, I think you bring up a good point. Why is Matip not playing? Do you think it's just because Klopp is is rotating? That's a, that's all it can be. It's yeah. certainly not a um, talent, skill level, nothing. Because, look, Kanate comes in, we win 5-0, Kanate's a hero. Oh, Ronaldo's in his pocket. Cool. Cool. That's fine. Matt Tip needs a rest. I was shocked. We were all like, you know, panicking yeah. a bit when we saw that United lineup, but he did fine. But yesterday, he's fast. There's no doubt he's fast and he can like he can like recover. Yeah. But he was pulled out of position a lot yesterday. Yes, he was. I saw him way too far up the pitch. I saw him way too far over. Like, the one thing you say about Virgil is Virgil is not back to his best yet. I'm not seeing him make, like, major mistakes. But just, like, in general, Virgil's positioning is perfect. He's just always in the right place at the right time. But, like, so is Matip. They're yeah. kind of just, like, right here. They, they, they shift a little bit. But, like, yesterday was, like, Van Dyke and, like, Kanate's, like, over here somewhere. Like, I floating around. That. Yeah. For nothing. Yeah. You weren't you didn't make any of those runs I saw you make when I was watching your highlight tape earlier this year. You put maybe one or two passes over the top, which you're apparently known for as well. At the very least, stay in your position. Mm -hmm. No, well, I agree with that. It's no Especially knock on him. He's young, but like Matt yeah. Tip's gotta be we have to win these games. <laughs> That's the best center back pairing in the world right now. Why is he on the bench for two straight matches? That's my question. And I think and it really just comes down to I think Klopp wants to rotate. Because he doesn't want to risk injuring Matip. I'm telling you right now, guys, it's actually smart from Klopp. But at the same time, hindsight's 2020, And you look back, you're like, why did Klopp not play Matip? Well, the reason he didn't play Matip was probably, Steve, he was probably just trying to give him a rest to make sure he's not overworked and he doesn't get injured. All right. But going what to, back to what you said about Kanate, that Trossard goal, the second goal, Kanate was caught out playing right back. No, he, and he, he, no, he was playing right wing. And he's jogging. He it was Sepp Vandenberg. Yeah, he just got beat, and Van Dyke was trying to cover not only the pass but the runner, and he couldn't do it. So that I think that's that's where that comes from. But again, he's young. He's he's 22, I believe. He's got so much time, guys, and he's so good. He's so good. I mean, I think Kanate is very very talented, um, but he's no Matip. He's no, no. Van Dyke. And no, and no. What are we yeah. gonna do about Gomez? There was I, a link. There was a thing that came out earlier this week that Gomez might want to transfer away from Liverpool so he can try to get into the England squad. Um, I think this was Gomez's job before Matt Tip 
but Matip was ready sooner than him. So Matip started playing this season, and he's been healthy and damn good. Yeah. So Gomez is like, crap. Like, Gomez is like, I'm not 21 anymore. What is he now? I think he's 24. Yeah, I mean, ugh, he's got to be playing. He's yeah. got to be playing. He's a top he five English though. right back, I would I would say. No? Gomez? Bones, yeah. Right back? No, um, center back. Oh, I was going to say. Right I think back? I might have no. said right back. Maguire, Stones, Mings, him, who else? So, you know? Yeah. and He should be playing in those, in those big tournaments, in those big games for England. No, you're absolutely right. I think you hit the nail on the head with – because you remember – Remember back before we had Kanate, right, and and before the injury crisis, Gomez and Matip were like neck and neck. They would, mm-hmm. if one was injured, the other would play, and vice versa. And they were phenomenal. There was a debate going on for two years: who's better, Matip or Gomez? And you couldn't choose. Now though, Matip has just he's he's way above him now, dude. He's put in the performances. He's been healthy, luckily. And when Gomez has come on. Especially, dude, perfect example, Preston North End. We talked about this. He was not good against Preston. He wasn't. Yeah. No, and he I know. should have been he should have been one of the best players on the field. It's weird because I feel like that happens every cup game. Somebody just looks terrible that's supposed to be good. Yeah. Was it Ox versus Norwich? Yes, you're right. Like I remember Fabinho yes. against like Lincoln City last no, year. You're dude, you're Perfect. You're right there. Ox against Norwich was horrific. Yeah, there's just one bad egg in every single one of those games. I'm sad it was Gomez. Yeah. Because, like, Klopp's like, okay, Kanate, you're going to play against United. Gomez is like, he is? Yeah. (laughs) And then Klopp's like, but no, no, don't worry. You're going to play against Preston North and we need your pace. They're pacey. Yeah. He's like, all right, coach. And then he plays like crap and he's like, damn, I'm number four now. Yeah. And, and then, then he tells Matt his comes agent in and puts in a shift and he's like, am I number five coach? <laughs> and then he tells his agent and he's like, Hey, can you put this story about it, about me trying to move away from Anfield? Because I don't like this. It's like, dude, this is what happens. If you come in and you don't perform, you're not going to play. Sorry. This isn't rec league. No, it's, it's certainly not rec league. Um, Kanate, sorry, pal. The United thing gave me a heart attack, but, you did it. You crushed it. Yeah. Joel has to come back in now. He does. He does. So so um, that's three games he's been rested, right? No, no, no. He played against Preston. You know, him and Gomez started against Preston. Why? Why? Why not Kanate and Gomez? Because I think we're trying to make a cup run this season. Yeah, they're season. trying to actually win. We're trying to actually <laughs> win it. Yeah. Before, Klopp didn't care about... Do you remember... Every single season, we've lost in, like, the second round. Like... I just always think about how Klopp would used to play Alberto Moreno in the EFL Cup. You remember when he just got turned inside out by uh, Eden Hazard? Yeah, I do. Way back. I I don't know why. I I remember that play. Everyone remembers that play. I think he's doing well in Spain. No, he he is. I think that was a good move for him. Um, Now, Georgie asked, Kyle, if Ox and Nabi leave, who's going to replace them? So let's talk about this, Steve. Let's just assume... I really think Ox should be sold this summer. Um, KDOT, I just don't know yet. I really don't know. If Ox leaves, I think FSG go for a deal, like a free transfer kind of deal. They they wait to see if they can bring someone in on a free. And if they don't have the right players that are available on a free, they'll again look for a, a deal. And if they can't find that, then they're going to have to go and find a great player, right? Perfect examples are... Allison Van Dyke, you can't get cheap defenders. You had to go all out to fix the problem. But when you just when you're looking for cover, you can either look at the youth academy, or you can bring in these Minaminos. Or you know, Ox was kind of expensive at the time, but that was before the whole COVID crisis hit. So I mean, Ox now, if you're going into the market to buy Ox now, he's no more than twenty million at most. You know what I mean? So. What do you think about like Kessie, right? So Kessie is a type of player you'd bring in on a free transfer, right? But then you move up the tier list and you can look at players like Jude Bellingham. Uh, you can look at players like, give me some other names that we've been linked with, like uh, Calvin Phillips. Tielemans. Right? Tielemans. Suma. Yeah. So, I mean, these are all the, the, the players that are linked with moves. 
right? Because Telemans hasn't signed a new contract. Kessie hasn't signed a new contract. From what I under, I feel like Jude Bellingham isn't going anywhere. I think he's going to stay at Dortmund for another year or so. Um, and then who knows who's going to snatch him up. But who who would be your ideal type player to replace Ox, dude? Like, because think about Ox weaknesses. He's not particularly good at pressing. He's not... His best aspect of his game is probably his attacking and his his energy, I'd probably say. Like, his ability to... I think he's just energetic. Um, but defending, he's not quite there. So who, who are you thinking about? I think a, Har- a healthy Harvey Elliott. I, I'm right there with you. Harvey's probably a top three favorite player of mine these days. Just so everyone out there knows. That's the kid I'm buying. We, hit, we have three games to go on, and he was excellent in those games. But to be fair, Steve. I love him. Who did we play? We played Norwich. <clears throat> Chelsea. And then Crystal Palace? I don't know. I don't know, but... He's like a 9 out of 10 in every match. He he was good, but he didn't... He was unbelievable. He, but he, he didn't... didn't any, he didn't get anything. You well, know, neither did Kata for three seasons, so... <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. What do you guys think in the chat? Who who would you replace either Kata or Ox with? Oh, you know? boy. And in the meantime... Oh, so we got Grabenbach or Grabenbirch, whatever the hell his name is. Um, Tony says, I never believe the stories. It's always easy for journalists to say that a player who isn't playing wants to move on in, in regards to Gomez. Um, Kyle said the M word. I forget. What did I say? Hmm. I don't know. See, Rocky LFC. Shout out to Rocky. I haven't seen in a while. Ox Rocky. long shots. Are, uh, his long shots are fire. I need to see one that's not blocked, bro. The last yeah, one that went so in was FIFA. five years ago. No, seriously. The last one, the last long shot he had, long. It wasn't even a screamer. Wasn't that against Gank? Wasn't that outside of the foot first time? That was like, no, that was a chip. Yeah. That was outside of the foot. Gank. A little curler off the underside of the bar. Oh, Gank, you're right. 2019. Does he hit one since then? Dude, I don't think so. I really don't. Jeez, man. Ox long shots. Rocky, are you just wa- are you watching old matches? <laughs> oh my goodness. Now people are saying Jude is an LFC fan. That's great. That that gives us a leg up on the competition, but I don't know. So is Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah, to be fair, Kevin is a is a LFC fan. Everyone's saying Telemans, Telemans. Telemans, if we could get him, what price would you get? Would you be acceptable for Telemans, Steve? For us to pay? 40. 40 max? 45 max. 45 max. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's what we buy. That's what we spend these days. Kanate, yeah. 35, 40. Jota, Bobby, Sadio, Firmino. Years ago, yes. Keda, um, a little bit higher than that. Ox was about 40. That's what we spend. And then, like, okay. uh, Virgil and Allison, those are outliers. But, like, you needed a world-class center back. You needed a world-class keeper. We don't need a – I don't dare I say. I'm not going to call him world-class, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, I don't see a splashing unless it's for someone young that's, like, maybe a Bellingham that could be, like, one of the best in the world at some point. But, okay. you know, and I'm just ranting here because like, that's just what I do. You look at somebody like Sancho lighting up the Bundesliga coming from Dortmund comes over here. Is he still, is he still, is he still a professional player? <laughs> does he have a kit? Does, does he, he have boots? He got sent like, down to the minors. <laughs> like wh- why isn't he playing for like their U23 team? He's done nothing. He hasn't gotten a chance. He's not given. That's what I understand about United. Well, all right, look, Here's here's where I'll give United credit. And this isn't even a positive. It's just like I'm something I'm noticing. United will bring in these world-class players and they don't play. Their depth, okay? Their depth. They got Donny van de Beek on the bench, okay? They got Matic. I think they still have Juan Mata on the books. And then um, they Um, he might be gone now. He I he think might you're right. Be, but no, he stuck around. He stuck around long. way too long. Now, 
but Sancho and then who was the other guy? Donny Van de Beek. These guys came over for astronomical fees. Great world class talents, youth yeah. talents. They haven't played at all. And it's <laughs> like the problem, the thing is, is that Liverpool don't do that. They're not going to pay $60 million for someone who's going to come and warm the bench if they're healthy. They don't do that. That's a waste of money. You're yeah. literally setting money on fire. Okay? And that's we the also big... don't really buy people because that, yeah. our squad – we're not necessarily old. We're not getting any younger, for sure. I mean, there's a couple young ones in there. But, like, we, you wouldn't look at our squad and say, oh, that squad is old. We have a lot of people that are in their prime, maybe even heading towards the end of their prime. <clears throat> but, like, you look at United. Like, so, so what I'm trying to say is we buy players that, like, will be at that point. You know? Or at least we think. Yeah. Like, that's what a Minamino is. That's what a Kanate is. We don't. No one expects them to play, except for those weird Kanate fan boys, like at the beginning. Yeah, you know. And even but now, like United, they're buying players that like have to play. They've they've established themselves as quality enough to play, and these very same guys are sitting on the bench behind McTominay and Fred and Pogba, who just has his crazy antics and his injuries constantly. Mm -hmm. I just don't get it. Now to play devil's advocate, and then they advocate. sold Daniel James. Good for him. Yeah, good for him. That was weird, though. That was weird. Uh, to be, to play devil's advocate here, maybe they're doing similar to what we do when we bring in a new player. They need time to adjust, and so Klopp doesn't play them, right? He doesn't play them until they're ready. Now, I don't know if he doesn't think Donny Van de Beek's ready. I don't know if he doesn't think Sancho's ready. Could be the ch could be it, or maybe he just doesn't want to play him. Maybe he doesn't trust him yet. But the the point being is that. They at least have these players that if they started, you're like, damn, okay, that's a top player that's starting. It's not like they're starting, I don't know, a youth player, right? That, that's all I'm saying. So if we're to bring in depth, I'm looking at players like Kessie. I'm looking at players like Basuma. Like Basuma yesterday was great. The only issue I can see with him is is the the accusations of uh, sexual assault. I don't know if that's good PR for Liverpool or or whatever, um, but but Steve, you get what I'm saying here. It's not like I would want these players to come in and start and compete for a starting spot. They would strictly be a depth guy. They'd be number five or six on the depth chart, and they would come in and play in games like this where we have half the damn team out injured. Yeah, but I also think like. You, you get a Telemans or a Basuma, like, they're good enough to start. They're not going to break into our first 11. But, like, how often do you look at our lineup or, like, <clears throat> our available players and go, like, everyone's available? You know? Yeah. So, like, how often is it going to get to the point where it's, like, oh, Telemans doesn't deserve to play because Tiago, Fabinho, and Hendo are healthy? Like, that's just rare. Or, like, maybe yeah. Klopp sees something, a weakness in the other lineup where – Maybe it's not suited for Hendo, but like Telemans can slot in there. Like these guys will play plenty. Like they're hundred percent. They're not yes. going to be considered one of our best eleven per se. But like you, we get we have tons of injuries every year. They're going to play. And like the more that the more time that goes on, the more I'm like, okay, like we could do that. But like if we're not doing it, if we didn't do it in the summer, if if it's not going to happen in January, then like we must be plotting for something huge. Mm -hmm. Like. One is to re-sign Mo Salah. Oh, that's that's a big thing, guys. We can't forget about that. That's huge money, too, Steve. Because if he wants what four hundred k a week, what is that twenty mil a year? It's big money. It is, but it's like, higher than any anything we're playing. But just think about that as like two players. Yeah, yeah. Like he's worth two players. He produces the stats of two players. Right. The only problem there is. He's one guy, so if he gets hurt, that's 400k a week that you're just throwing down the drain. But he's also earned it too. Like there's there's a respect factor here. Yes, it's not just a business. Sometimes you know it. It would be flat out insulting to him to not try to meet him where he thinks he's valued. Because honestly, dude, he's worth whatever he's asking for. Like yeah. you can't you cannot debate that, guys. Mo Salah is producing at the level that the top players in the world produce at. Mm -hmm. 
and arguably more. What does Rashford make? Did we already talk about this? I think it's his new contract. I think it's like 350, 375. Okay. It's up well, there. We talked about this recently, and I want everyone to listen clearly here. By the way, everyone that's still sticking around with us in, in, sticking around with us in the chat, hello. We love you. Yeah. And what Dermot <laughs> said before you jump into that, Steve, is that I think they went back an hour, so we might be getting some people showing up here at the end. So maybe that's why. Because usually we have a little bit more than we have in the chat right now. So, But that's fine. Go ahead, Steve. Um, okay, so this is – Take this with a grain of salt. It looks like 350,000, 350K euros per week for Sancho. That's what I'm reading here. Yeah. Someone confirm. But I don't anyways, think he's played 200 minutes yet for the team. Uh, he has seven appearances in Premier League, no goals, no assists. And then you got. I know I'm not proving anything here because, like, we, you know, we all say just give Salah what he wants, but he really deserve he really deserves it. Yeah. Like Rashford, everyone roasting Bobby last year. Remember we looked at this? Everyone just roasting Bobby last year. Worst, worst, worst year ever. Yeah. Same amount of goals as Marcus Rashford in less games. These are the things you have to think about. <sighs> yeah. I used to see people giving Bobby slack on social media yesterday. For not finishing that chance. Yeah, no, I was definitely pissed. Oh, yeah. But we had all the momentum. That wasn't the only chance we could have put away. Right. Salah got a little sloppy when he got in the box. Like, he was very unselfish yesterday, which I like. But, like, I just wanted him to try to put on one of those dancing acts. He, you know? was, he was too unselfish yesterday. There's a yeah. couple chances where he, he had a lot of space and he tried to cross it. Um, Shout out to Sadio Mane. He's back yes. in good graces with me. Defending yeah. his tail off. Yep. Yep. I, I agree. A lot of people would say in the second half, Sadio wasn't that great. That's fine. Sadio has been the last few games. He's back. I think I, I'm not going to criticize Sadio anymore unless he has a really, really bad game, but I think he's back. Um, one thing I wanted to see here, Rocky said, first, we need to free a non homegrown player spot to sign any player. Um, I don't. So the homegrown player rule, Steve, it, it's either they have to be through our youth academy, right? Or they have to be English, correct? I see that's the I'm thing. The I don't guy. I don't know the exact rules of that, but let's just say we sell Tony ox. Will know. Tony, let us know. So say we sell ox, right? He's English, he's gone. But we got these other guys coming up through the youth academy that we can sign to like their first big deals, right? That counts as a homegrown player. So it's like then you can bring someone in. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not worried about them figuring that out. They'll definitely yeah, figure the it out. That's the least of my wars. Yeah. Uh, Man I don't United really have any wars other than the fact that like I I only, I just am obsessed with clean sheets and we're not seeing them. I'm just well, I mean United, but that's a great clean sheet. <clears throat> it is. It is. I just wish we um, well we had Atletico that scored on us. We had you know Brentford. Um, Preston? No, that was a clean sheet. That was a clean sheet. That was a clean yesterday. sheet. We could have let up four or five yesterday. One thing I want to say about the um, clean sheet against Preston, okay? Not a single – when Adrian doesn't play, everyone hates Adrian. They they will never stop talking crap about him. But when he comes in and does a good job, everyone just stays quiet because they don't want to be wrong. They don't want to be, like, hypocrites. Adrian played fine. He played. He did his job. Oh, no, he it played was, very well. It was it's okay to not like Adrian and give him credit. He was awesome. Adrian was great, and so was Nico Williams, by the way. Oh, okay? yeah. Nico Williams looked like a man out there. Yes. And so that I just want to go on record and say that, you know, these guys can – you can talk crap about them when they play bad, but when they play well, you should give them credit, okay? And they played well. So that's the first thing. Um and Liz says here, they have to be on an English team for at least three years before they turn 21. Got it. Okay. So that's the rule, I guess. So Ox would classify as a homegrown player then. So if we sell Ox, we would have to either sign someone from the youth academy or bring in an English player. So you think about Jude Bellingham, that's an option, right? These I'm just thinking out loud here. Um but here's Ahmed. I think this is a hot take. Liverpool need Renato Sanchez beside Fabinho in midfield if they want to challenge for titles. 
Um, I don't think they need them if they want to challenge for titles. I mean, that would be cool. I think Renato Sanchez is a solid player. Um, mm-hmm. Not at the top of my wish list, but it's definitely not what we need to challenge for titles. We're cha- we could challenge for titles with the team we fielded yesterday. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I agree. Guys, don't we forget. We could have scored five or six goals ourselves yesterday. Yeah, yesterday was just an odd game, guys. Remember, we had a goal ruled out for handball when really we created that goal defensively with our press. First off, why the hell are you playing out from the back in your own six-yard box? That was Dunk's fault. He turned and passed it right to that keeper, who I believe is a young guy. Sanchez, I think. Yeah, yeah, I, I think he's a young guy because they had a different – who was the other – where's the other guy at? Yeah, he was some Aust- New Zealand or Australian guy, Matt Ryan. What happened to him? He, I think he made it – I think he got purchased and went up somewhere. Let us Did know he? where he went. No, I think he's on a, at a better club. I don't know where he went, dude. But either way, um, yeah, Brighton gives us problems for some yeah. odd reason. Well, Brighton, what are they, sixth right now? Yeah, they're playing well. Brighton's no good, guys. Well. We, we got to, like, like dampen the uh, expectations, though. Like, we've yeah. seen a lot of a lot of teams get hot and then drop out. Sheffield United. Um, you know, there's a million examples. So last season he was signed by Arsenal. I knew what? it. I almost said it. Yeah. I almost said it. I knew it. I That's knew so it. weird to me, bro. Because you, so Burnt Burnt Leno, he's injured. He's got to be injured, right? Because otherwise, they have Ramsdale. And they have Ramsdale and yeah, Matt Ram- Ryan, I guess. So look, here's the thing, Burnt Leno. There was there was talk of him. I'm just going to go on this little aside real quick while we're talking about Arsenal. I he's got to be injured because I don't remember any any news talking about them selling Leno anywhere. Okay. Aaron Ramsdale, I thought was a weird signing. I was like, really? Is he at Arsenal's level? He's proven to be at Arsenal's level. But, and now they got Matt Ryan. It's just so weird. That's so weird to me. Um, But look, dude, the midfield is what we got to be concerned with. I'm I'm confident that Thiago and Fabinho will be back soon. And then people will somewhat forget about the injury crisis, right? People are always worried, and it's understandable. When you have five midfielders injured, you're like, damn, what are we doing? Like, we got to sign someone. But it's like once everyone comes back and we start producing results again. Guys, remember, we haven't lost in 24 matches. We're unbeaten in 24 matches. In all competitions, we're unbeaten. I know the draws suck in the league, especially when they come against Brentford and Brighton. We're unbeaten in 24 matches. Remember that. Yeah. No, I. we always have to end with some sort of something like this. Leno's the backup, though. I've been reading that. Someone's saying here in the chat, Rocky, our boy. Um, yeah, Kyle, we're, unde- we're we're unbeaten. It's it's tough to look at the table and not say it's top because I really am not too high on Chelsea like most people are. City lost yesterday as well. Like that gives us a chance to really put some pressure on them because I really think it's going to be us and them in the end. Personally, yeah, I mean, Chelsea can stick around, but um, I'm just confused. With the draws, it feels like a couple of years ago. It was just draws out the you know what. You, yeah, like, and we're it's two like, points we're not... above City, and they have two losses. This is, just goes back to my beautiful math skills. I know, I know. You know? I was we thinking have one more draw next today. week, and City wins. They're t- they're tied with us, and we're undefeated. Guys, think about this. We could have lost. Think about this. We could have lost to Brighton and Brentford. But if we beat Chelsea, we would have had more the same amount of points that we have after all those draws. So it's like, yeah, you think a draw is better, but it's like not. It's like, oh, dude, it's it's crazy, bro. It's wild to me too. The um, Chelsea zero zero yesterday at half versus Newcastle. Yeah, I'm like, oh, maybe they'll draw. Reese James scores two goals in the second half. Reese James, and then Jorginho got a penalty. They scored three goals in the last 25 minutes of the game and won 3 nothing. Yep. And I'm just like, hmm, that's weird. Because I really thought we were going to um, – I mean, but they dominated that game. They had 80% possession against Newcastle, 80%. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, to be fair, Newcastle's not exactly a possession-based team, but <laughs> – uh, um, but, yeah, I guess let's take a look at the table real quick. You want to pull that up? Yeah. yeah. Table right now, it's Chelsea three points ahead of us, and then I think Man City are two points behind us. I could be wrong. They are. 
But um, but then you got uh West Ham sitting pretty, and then like four through four through eight are all pretty even. I think there's like one point separating all of them. They all might be even on that. Um, yeah. Four through you know, seven are all tied. You gonna pull that up? Yeah, I can. I didn't know you wanted me to. No, no, no. You're fine because you can't. I'll pull it up on the screen for everyone to see. Um, but like, here's what here's what I fear. I fear we draw again, and then like United, who is literally and apparently in shambles. United wins. United's in three point within three points of us. If we draw again, and they they win next week. Yeah. Think about how crazy that is. We draw again and Chelsea wins next week. We're down five. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't want to think about it like that. I just want to think about us like converting when we should. Now, what really bothers me is when you look at this, bro. Look, all right, we we haven't lost, right? But three draws. Okay. Three draws right here. Okay. And then you look at the other teams that are not far off of us. Like you said, Man United, three losses, bro. In the last four. Three they losses. Have, they've dropped 11. No, they've dropped. What is that? What's the math there? They've dropped 11 out of the last 12 points. Yep. And we're only five up on them. I know that's that's a good amount, but like there's 28 games left. Yeah. These are the things I think about, like clean sheets. I want clean sheets. And I'm tired of draws. Well, all right, look, Steve, if you want to get really technical, okay, we, our goal difference is excellent, okay? 29 goals for, goals against eight. So our defense is, has been solid. But the games, the reason our goal, all of our goals against have resulted in draws. Like if you think about it, so Brentford, three goals, Brighton, two goals, and Chelsea was what was the was uh, Chelsea one one? Chelsea was one one and City was two two. Oh, I forgot about the City draw. Okay, so how many draws Those do we have? Those are the four draws. Oh, I thought we had three draws. Okay, so we have four draws. Okay, so all of our goals came in the draws, or all of our goals against. Scroll down on this. So keep going. Southampton is way down there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so here's what we got coming up next. We got Atletico on Wednesday. Yep. Again, West Ham on Saturday. We're at, the top of that. we're at the top of that group. Like, whatever. Do I do want to beat them because I hate them. I know, but we, we, we need to rotate that. I would not be upset if we drew that game because we need to prioritize. It's home too, which is nice. We need to prioritize West Ham. Yep. So then we have West Ham. Then we got Arsenal. So... Then we got Porto and then Southampton. So mm -hmm. it's West Ham and Arsenal back-to-back -back games. They're both playing pretty good. And then it's Everton. So there's three big Premier League games in a row coming up. Not to mention the Champions League games sprinkled in. Milan, yeah. Porto, and then, I mean, Milan, Porto, and Atletico Madrid are all in the next five weeks. We big game coming up. And then it's Aston Villa. Newcastle, Tottenham, Leeds, Leicester. Yeah. So Leeds have not been playing well, to be fair. Um, but it's still a tough game. It's not an easy game to win against Leeds. What, I, what I'm concerned with, Steve, I will not be concerned once we get Tiago and Fabinho back. Again, what I'm concerned with is the injuries. That's it. That's all I'm concerned with. Because Ox, Jones, and Hendo... Unfortunately, they're great players, and Hendo is a starter, right? Like, I, Hendo is a starter. He's competing. You could argue Keita Hendo for the starting midfield spot between Fabinho, Thiago, and Keita or Hendo, right? You, that's, what you're, that's what we're arguing right now. But with Fabinho and Thiago out, Hendo's got to start, and then you got Jones and Ox. That's not a good enough midfield to win titles in the Premier League. So we need that to get our other players back. When's Harvey coming back? Probably four or five more months. More months? He yeah. got hurt on the 12th of September. Yeah. Almost two months ago. Yeah. And he's he's probably he was probably out for six months, so he'll probably be back. He'll probably be back March or April is uh -huh. when he, he'll be eligible to come back. Um 
Dude, his leg got messed up, bro. No, I think, like, I honestly think he's coming back, like, no joke, like, December, January. Like, soon, dude. You think? Yes, I really do. Dude, he had, like, um, a Dak Prescott-type injury, and Dak Prescott, didn't he miss the whole season? Um, yeah, but it was it was a dislocation, I think. Who, Harvey? No, it was a dislocation. I think, so. I, I think he had a fracture in there, too. If it was a dislocation, well, that's different. Yeah, well, D- Dak Prescott's was a clean snap. I think this was more of a maybe like s- some smaller fractures and a dislocation. He was he was at the game yesterday. He's starting to do um, weight bearing exercise. He's a long way off, guys. I mean, he's he's got a, at least a couple months left. I think minimum two months. But the initial timeline was between three and six months. So optimistically, December January. Realistically, I think. March. I'm trying to read, and these websites just have too many ads on them. Yeah. Damn marketers. There's always cookies, too. Some Except these cookies. Fracture dislocation. It was a yes. fracture dislocation. So, and that's that's a traumatic injury. That doesn't, that doesn't, he just doesn't come back in December from that. Uh, so it would be October, December. You, December. He's got a lot of atrophy in the muscle. He's got to regain his fitness. He's got a lot of stuff he's got to do. I think first. like after the winter break. I hope so. Because really good do. God, if we have Harvey Elliott available, ho. Oh, mm-hmm. It's not ligament. Good. So like, yeah, it's different. It's different. It's all, it's all like how quick can you bounce back? Yeah. They're going to they're oh. gonna hit a point where they say, hey, your bone is healed. Yeah. Like your swelling is down, you're healed. Now it's up to you. Get through the mental challenges. Get back out there. You know you're already working on like your muscle, your your, like, your strength and stuff. Like he's already right. doing all that stuff. Yeah, I think he's gonna the, be back quick. He's young too, dude. He's so dude. He heals like a lizard, probably. Dude, it's not like you know. It's not like Millie with a yeah. snapped leg. Millie might just hang him up. Yeah. No. Yeah. Dude. Honestly, I didn't even think about that. You're right. Har- what is he? 18 years old. <laughs> I think so. 18 or 19. He's yeah. so young, Steve. He probably heals like – he might heal like in half the time that Hendo or Milner would heal in. Uh, let us – guys, whoever's still in here, let us know. Someone get a reliable source and let me know when he's supposed to be back because yeah. I'm really thinking like January. Yeah, and so like I said, Steve, the timeline was three to six months. So optimistically, January, in my opinion – because I don't know the injury. I didn't see it. If I knew exactly what the injury was, like what was damaged, then I could say. Fractures heal surprisingly quick. You would, like, between, like, 8 and 16 weeks, fractures heal. But he's got to do the rehab to get back. So I don't know how Three long Three months puts you at December 12th. So January, might January, February. I really, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, January. Yeah, man. We get Harvey in the winter months. Oh, man. We need him back, dude. Yeah. Ooh, where were we? We just went off on a tangent. Where I just we? love Harvey Elliott. Yeah, I got to buy that kit. Like, Seen like, him for three games, yesterday. and I'm just like, damn, this kid's good. He's just a player we needed. He's yeah. Shakiri, flashback 15 years with way more potential. 15 way years? Way more swag. <laughs> Shakiri ain't 33. <laughs> <laughs> Shakiri, anyone got a pulse on Shakiri? How's he doing over there in France? Yo, he's anyone? starting every game, bro. I, I watch the Leon highlights from time to time. He's not and, doing bad. I think he has and, like a goal and two assists, maybe a couple goals and two one assists. One goal, one assist, seven matches. Yeah, but he's been doing well. Yeah, he's a he's a good player, man. Yeah, he's a good player. Yeah, and downturn says, is Harvey really back that soon? I thought he was gone for the season. I the timeline was three to six months, guys. So three to six months. So at the latest, it would be what April. Yeah, no, he's not out for the whole year. No, even no, at he's even in, not out for the whole year. Even in worst case scenario, we he'd probably be available in April, March or April. Yeah. But it's not an ACL. It's not a ligament. It's different. Yeah. It's just it's just everyone is literally different. With an ACL, you can confidently say no one's coming back before eight months. And even yeah. that's a push. You can, you know. Nine months, I think. Yeah. Nine months. The, but it's if he has no ligament damage, zero ligament damage, it's 
extremely likely he'll be back in January or February. Because the Dude, bone just needs pool training and all yeah. that weight bearing. Oh man. He's he's ready. Because think Dude, he's he's playing next week. <laughs> he's playing next week. Also, Nick Red, pal, welcome. Harvey Elliott is a creative boy. He certainly is. Um, Curtis Jones not offer much, he says. Yeah. Like Curtis Curtis had a rough day yesterday. Yeah. Um, but like Curtis Jones has been unbelievable. Curtis is great. I feel confident with him starting in any match. Yesterday he looked tired to me. You think tired? I think he's he's literally better than their probably their entire midfield, maybe minus Basuma. Yeah, I, I thought him he looked tired. pretty good yesterday. But no, no, no. I agree. I agree. I like Curtis Jones in, in any situation. Oxlade is not. Yeah, you're right. Is Taki good in midfield? Well, look, we saw him for about 46 seconds yesterday. So I'm not really, I can't really say much, but Taki was great against Preston, man. Taki is good against those lower sides. I think you just got to get him a running, a run of minutes in a Premier League game to see what he can really do. Because honestly, excuse me. If you look at uh, Taki's stats for Liverpool over all games, including like preseason and everything, they're very good. Like yeah, usually when he plays, he scores. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So, yeah. It's just all the other stuff. Yeah. It's everything besides the stat sheet that they worry about with him. It's yeah. pace. It's physicality. Yeah. Seek Chan, what's good? Damn, what about what a bad game yesterday? We looked so unenergized after halftime. That first half, we should have sealed the game. And Seek, I agree with you because the first 20 minutes, Steve, I don't know about you, but we were playing amazing. And then as soon as Kata goes off, this is what we were talking about at the beginning. Game over. Everything changed. Not ideal. Not ideal. But guys, appreciate you guys tuning in for the show. Make sure you go over to manscape.com using our promo code capital N capital B capital R 20% off plus free shipping on all your orders. Doesn't matter what you get, even sale items, all that stuff. Support for the Sunday summary is brought to you by manscaped guys. There should be a link in the description for you guys to check out the website. It's just manscaped.com. Steve, do you have any closing yeah. thoughts, man? We kind of touched Actually, on everything. Guys, go use that code. It's 20% off plus yeah. free shipping. They have little knickknacks. They have like big packages and units and kits that you can buy. But, you know, support the channel. Support, you know, testicular cancer and the awesome stuff that Manscaped's doing over there. Buy a, you know, $15 gift for your for your boyfriend or your father or whatever. So we appreciate yeah. the support. Everyone's sticking around. We ran way over today, but that's all right. That's fine. Good topics. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. And, um, you know, Steve, Steve, again, I just think – you know, we didn't lose yesterday, but it feels like a loss because of how we started the game versus how we ended it. But we got to give Brighton credit. Brighton played well. Yeah, I, that's the other thing I was thinking this morning, and I forgot to mention that. Like, we actually didn't say that really today. We didn't say, oh, we give Brighton credit. Like, after the Brentford draw, I felt obligated to say it 100 times. I don't feel obligated to say that anymore. Brent, uh, Brighton, nice job. Graham Potter, cool. Like, we'll see you guys in the 12th spot at the end of the season. Oh, dang. You know? Get, like, get roasted. I think they'll like, finish top 10. I like Leandro Trossard. I think he's a good player. I always did. I think last year was a weird year for him. They, he, like, didn't play. And, like, when he played, he didn't really do anything. But they've got him forward up on the wing now. And he's dangerous. Yeah. Like, he keeps playing like that. He could get, he could get a, like, a better job somewhere. Um, but, yeah, shout out to – credit to Brighton. They've been playing well, but that is our that is our defense. And like we can make we can blame the midfields, but like how often does that midfield ever play together? Like that's that's exactly it's not what their I was fault that they're at, you know yeah. four, five, six choice midfielders. Yeah. Um but yeah, I think if Matt tips in yesterday, we win that game. I think he cuts out a lot of those chances, provides more stability. Kanate's not drifting off into row 14. <laughs> What's he doing over there? I don't know. <laughs> he was way out there, dude. I think, honestly, if we even just had Fabinho or Thiago, we win that game. I really do. I really do think that. But, guys, appreciate all of you for tuning in. Appreciate the thoughts. Every Sunday, 9 a.m., we're here, whether it's live or we got to upload something previously. We'll be here for you guys. Steve, I appreciate you coming on, man. I'm always here. Well, when I'm not at the Patriots games or getting married.
That's true. That's a big one. But luckily, marriage is over. I mean, the marriage isn't over, but the, the wedding's well, over. Well, you never know. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. All right, guys. Appreciate everyone for tuning in. And until next time, Reds, take care.